Good evening, Faith Church. Greetings in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And thank you for inviting me to share God's Word with you. We are now in the flow of the Christian year in the season of Pentecost. Last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday where we remembered the outpouring of the Spirit on the followers of Jesus as they were gathered in Jerusalem. Earlier this month, we also celebrated Ascension Day, an event that in its meaning celebrated and recognized Jesus as God's King, the leader of his kingdom on earth. I sometimes think of that Ascension Day event as Jesus inauguration, thinking of it in terms of our political system. Jesus ran for office and uh, he did so by bringing God's word and truth and grace into this world, both speaking it and in his deeds and actions, but above all, by remaining uh, sinless as God's servant, even through sufferings and death and that led to his eventual election day triumph when uh, only one voter voted. And that was God Almighty, the Father himself, who raised him from the dead. And that was Jesus' uh, election day victory to be the king of God's kingdom on earth. And then, as we have here, about 75 days between election day and inauguration, typically Elections the first week of November, then January 20th, around there, we have Inauguration Day. Well, Jesus, for 40 days, made various uh, physical manifestations of his presence to his uh, followers. And he confirmed to him them that he indeed truly was alive. And then uh, he uh, wanted to show them that he had defeated death and so over that span of 40 days it eventually led to them gathering in Jerusalem and at the ascension he said to them now I am going to the father's right hand and uh, don't leave Jerusalem wait for the gift that the father promised that I spoke to you about and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea Samaria and to the ends of the earth and I want to build on that text with my scripture teaching tonight drawing from Jesus words in John 16 where he in the upper room the evening on which he was later arrested uh, spoke to his disciples about the work of the Holy Spirit and the coming of the Spirit. And um, the reason I want us to think about that is because at the right hand of God, Jesus is there building God's kingdom. And how does he do that? He does that through us, who, in the words of the Catechism, share in his anointing, the, his Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, fills his people. And then through their witness, the kingdom of God is built to the ends of the earth. So we want to be part of that great kingdom project which has begun in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Gospel of John chapter 16. I'm going to be reading verses 5 to 15. And then we'll... Uh, Look at what the work of the Spirit is that we might be part of this kingdom project. Hear God's holy word. Now I am going to him, Jesus said, who sent me. Yet none of you asks, where are you going? Because I've said these things, you're filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin 
and righteousness and judgment in regard to sin because men do not believe in me in regard to righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can no longer see me and in regard to judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine and that is why the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, <clears throat> how does Jesus build his kingdom on earth? Through the anointing that he gives to his people. The Holy Spirit makes the person and presence and power of Jesus alive to us. We who belong to him. So at the beginning of this passage, Jesus' followers are uh, sad. Their hearts are filled with grief. Uh, their leader, their Lord, is about to leave them. And Jesus says, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, he foretold his death and his resurrection and his return to the Father. And so, you know, when this is about to happen, they're, they're dealing with a lot of emotions. But Jesus says, in fact, this is actually good for you because uh, it's all of part of God's plan for building his kingdom on earth. Jesus is saying, that now that I have lived uh, the godly life, well, you know, he still had to go through his sufferings and death, but he came in the big picture of things to live the true life, the holy, faithful life, always in step with God's spirit. And thereafter, he died the sacrificial death to secure our forgiveness of sins, him being a holy human whose death sufficed for our sins. And then after that, Jesus said, I will enter into the heavens to send my spirit to you. The spirit who is in our translation here, the counselor or can be translated the spirit who is the helper, the advocate, the comforter. He is the spirit of truth who will guide God's people. He guides you and I into God's truth. And he does that by taking what is mine, the person, the life, the work of Jesus, and making it known to you, making it real, making it personal, making it life transforming. So in verses 8 to 10, Jesus uh, breaks down what this work of the Holy Spirit is as the Holy Spirit applies Jesus into our lives. And he distinguishes three areas that the Spirit speaks to us about, that the Spirit convicts us in. One is sin, the other righteousness, and the third judgment. And the Lord Jesus says the Spirit will speak to you about sin. And yes, that does involve convicting us about what's right and wrong, but it is much more than just pricking our conscience about right and wrong because the purpose of the Spirit's work is to bring us to Jesus. And so what Jesus says in verse 9 in regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In other words, what the Spirit's ultimate purpose is in regard to sin is to show you that at root sin is unbelief. Sin is not believing what God has told us about himself through Jesus, through Jesus' words and through Jesus' life. So for example, one of the commandments is you shall not steal. Well, you know, what's wrong with stealing? Well, you know, you take something that doesn't belong to you. 
But even deeper than that, what's wrong with it is that you are not believing who Jesus is. You're not, you're not, it's unbelief. You're thinking, well, I have to look after myself. You know, I don't have a, a father in heaven. I don't have uh, a, a savior who will really truly look after me. So no matter what, I've got to do it and I'll do it my ways. And it's unbelief. Unbelief is below anxieties that plague our life. At root to all sin is a rejection, an unbelief in who Jesus is. And the Holy Spirit is the one who in the life of repentance uh, unpeels the onion, you might say, and gets us down to that place where we understand the roots of sin are not believing what Jesus taught and who Jesus is because he himself lived a life of full trust in his father, even in his situation of being rejected by men. He trusted. He trusted and God raised him from the dead. And so his life is testimony that God cares for us. So whenever we sin, the spirit is someone who wants us to understand that it is our sin is, is personal unbelief toward God. And, you know, the Spirit's purpose, he's like a spotlight to illumine who Jesus is, his words and his person. The second area that he speaks to us about is, is righteousness. You know, what's right? <laughs> what's wrong? Is it okay to gossip and complain? Is same-sex marriage okay? Is it is it okay to just neglect the oppressed and poor just that's the way things are in this world no jesus is god's righteousness on earth and so through him we learn what is right according to god we observe him and learn from him who shows us the right things of life but more than that as jesus says in his teaching in this upper room Discourse, he says, in regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. What the Holy Spirit does when it comes to the issue of righteousness is to draw us to the fact that Jesus' righteousness is now there before God the Father, the Holy God. He stands there for mankind because as you sincerely begin to discern the issues of right and wrong, of truth and falsehood, of good and evil, you learn, as uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn put it, the, the line between good and evil is not between, you know, different political parties or different nations. It's a line that runs right through our own hearts. We all have, we all have unrighteousness in our life and we all know deep down we're not all the people who we were meant to be or even who we can be as human beings. And so our righteousness falls short as we live before a holy God. We need to find a, a basis for righteousness with God that is beyond ourselves, uh, an alien righteousness, a given righteousness. And what the Holy Spirit tells us is that righteousness is in Jesus. It's in Jesus to turn to as we learn to uh, repent and turn from our sin in sorrow and then embrace him as God's righteousness, God's goodness that has come for our salvation. And so the Holy Spirit tells us, yes, what's right and wrong. But ultimately, he wants to draw us to the righteousness of Jesus that is there before the throne of God for his people and their standing with God. And then the third area that Jesus delineates is uh, the area of judgment. Judgment. Uh, life has meaning, really, in an ultimate sense, because there's a judgment day coming. And on that day, the Bible teaches that all of our life, all of our thoughts and words and 
deeds and even the motives of our heart will will be scrutinized will be judged through Christ and all those all of who we are will find its its meaning and its measure on judgment day so we're to prepare for that and the first matter in preparing for judgment day the first issue is who do you belong to who do you belong to do you belong to the light or to the darkness whose side are you on and in regard to judgment what the holy spirit tells us is verse 11 that the prince of this world which is a term for satan now stands condemned hallelujah who do you belong to is it the prince of this world the ruler of this age of the earth or do you belong to the king of god's heavenly kingdom the kingdom of righteousness and justice the kingdom of god's shalom and wholeness that has begun and will one day usher in the new heavens and the new earth who do you belong to the prince of this world is the ruler of this age and what jesus has accomplished through his life and death and resurrection is to condemn the power of satan to own you satan's power is in the reality of our sin god has given us his law and the ten commandments and if we turn from it in even the slightest way the consequence of that turning is death because God is life and to turn from him in any measure is death and we all have turned from God in numerous and various measures just as Satan has in a definitive way he turned from God and so Satan can say to anyone with measures of sin in their heart hey he belongs to me he belongs to me sinners belong to me in the lake of death and eternal fire sinners belong to me in eternal separation from a holy god they have broken your laws so they belong to me they have turned from you how can anyone escape that eternal condemnation of belonging to the prince of darkness well it's only by belonging to another ruler the ruler of god's kingdom the one who became incarnate, the eternal son, named Jesus the Christ, who fulfilled the law, who fulfilled obedience and then died to offer his life for anyone who turns to him in repentance and trust and allegiance as king. Jesus has taken away Satan's power to own you. Satan himself is now condemned by Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And the Holy Spirit, who spotlights Jesus, is the one who brings that reality to you for your first preparation for Judgment Day. And thereafter, we prepare to become all that we can according to the qualities and character of God as Jesus had revealed him gaining substance for the inheritance of the eternal kingdom. But the first issue is who do you belong to? And the Holy Spirit is the one to say Satan has been condemned by Jesus' work. And so belong to Jesus as king. And so for those reasons, when the Holy Spirit comes on us, as Jesus said, at his ascension event we will have power we will have power to be witnesses because when we understand those truths through the ministry of the holy spirit that take takes what is of the lord jesus and makes it ours we no longer have fear we don't have fear and death we don't have any fear of judgment we don't have any fear of condemnation regarding our sins our salvation is secure in Christ the Holy Spirit takes what is of Jesus and makes it 
yours. And so God's kingdom is built in the power of our joy and thanks and freedom in Christ. We are free to pursue justice and goodness and healing and human flourishing that God's kingdom is all about. Flourishing in relationships, in society, in culture. Are you part of the kingdom project? It has begun. The foundation is laid in Jesus Christ, the word of God. Trust in him as savior, enthrone him as king, and then live attentive to the Holy Spirit as he applies who Jesus is, his life, his teachings, his work, his person to you day by day. He will glorify me, Jesus says, by taking what is mine and making it known to you. Therein, we have power to be witnesses of God's salvation on earth and his kingdom, which is and is to come. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Spirit, whereby we truly live in fellowship with your Son. And we thank you that the Spirit has come to make us witnesses of Jesus' glory. And so, indeed, in this season of Pentecost, refresh and deepen us in our life with the Spirit. <clears throat> May the words of this teaching be a blessing to you. We ask that you would take your word and accomplish your good purposes through it. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.